Welcome back to Multiversal Studios. This is a breakdown of episode 5 of Yu-Gi-Oh! Capsule Monsters. So if you haven't already, go check out the breakdown of the previous episodes, which will be linked in the description below. Now I have to be honest with you guys, I enjoy Capsule Monsters and I want to share that enjoyment with you guys, which is why I started this series in the first place. However, there is a few episodes I do dislike and unfortunately, episode 5 is one of them. And I will still try to be fair and give it the breakdown as usual. But I did find this episode a little boring, even though it did have moments of coolness. For example, Yugi finally getting to use the armor. Now as they enter into the portal, they come across a desert for their first trial, and Grandpa collapses as he sustained a lot of damage from their previous battle. However, even after Tear tries to heal Grandpa with Happy Lover, Grandpa wasn't fully healed, which is to be expected since he's really old. Now they try and find shelter for Grandpa to rest, and lucky for them, they come across a little village in the desert. Now I believe this is where the first of the five challenges will take place, and a little girl who seems to be the guide on their first task takes them to the village elder, who gives them a scroll. Now he does this by using some kind of fire summoning ability, so my first assumption was that this elder must be a Yu-Gi-Oh card as well, but after looking into it, I couldn't find a card that resembled this old man. So if anyone recognizes this guy from a Yu-Gi-Oh card, let me know in the comments down below. Now on the scroll it says, silence the whisper that rise the desert winds. But I won't lie, that's a big scroll for there only to be one sentence. Now almost one second after they read the scroll, they hear the whisper in the desert wind. <laughs> Now the next part is a little confusing, as the girl says this. Yes, as we have learned from our last visitor, the answer lies in the eye of the storm. So basically what this means is, this game auto-learns from the other people who have played it before. So the last person to play this game realized that the answer lies in the eye of the storm, which means they didn't have that knowledge when they first played it. So this was extra knowledge to help Yugi and his friends. Now the girl also confirms only one other person had come through this game, meaning Yugi and his friends were the second people. Now before they left, Teya received a necklace with a ruby looking pentagon, which probably represented the five trials they have to go through. Now even though they initially go looking for the village so Grandpa could rest, well forget about that because the writers sure did and Grandpa just comes with them into the desert. Now as soon as they enter the desert they are attacked by multiple Medusa worms. Now Yugi actually tells Grandpa to take a back seat in this fight. However, once the desert sandstorm envelops everyone and their vision, we just have to assume that Grandpa is in a place of safety. It's a shame that Grandpa couldn't take part actually, because he's definitely been really useful so far. Now Joey summons the flame swordsman, Taya summons the dark witch, and unfortunately as Tristan hasn't received another capsule monster, he's still relying on Thunder Kid. Now honestly, I think this logic is flawed, because as they progress through the game, they will get stronger monsters and then just never use the monsters they received at the start. Like I can guarantee, now that Yugi has Dark Magician, he'll never touch the capsule containing Celtic Guardian ever again. Like in Pokemon for example, the Pokemon grow and evolve whilst you progress on your journey, whereas here, they get abandoned when you get a stronger capsule. I feel like the monsters should be utility based. For example, Hinatama's soul is good in certain environments since it's a living fire. So if each of their monsters were strong in a certain field or situation, then it would make it more interesting as they would have to think about which capsule they should use instead of just going for the arguably strongest monster each time until another stronger one comes along. Now another issue I have is Yugi summoning the Dark Magician. He legit summoned it last episode and now again and no time has literally passed in between. Whereas the summoned skull received like 3 episodes worth of cooldown time. In this episode, Yugi literally summons the Dark Magician, puts it back in the capsule and then re-summons it. So what's going on? Dark Magician is a level 7 monster with similar attack to Summon Skull who's a level 6 and yet Dark Magician receives no cooldown time. That's just unfair. Now as Yugi and his friends fight the Medusa Worms, they start to lose as they can't see anything due to the sandstorm. 
and the Medusa worms spit an acid which actually starts to turn Yugi and his friends to stone. Which I guess kinda makes sense, since it's called Medusa Worm. Now the Dark Magician swoops Yugi up and takes him above the sandstorm, which reveals the Eye of the Storm. Whereas the little girl said, the answer lies in the Eye of the Storm. Now in this situation, I was wondering why the Dark Magician doesn't just fly him over to defeat the monster. But for some reason, Yugi just goes back down into the sandstorm and even calls back his Dark Magician. His plan, guys, is to run to the Eye of the Storm through the sandstorm. When Atem asks Yugi the obvious question of what would happen if they just get attacked by one of the worms, the reply Yugi gives him is, we'll just believe in the heart of the cards. And then hope that by some strange miracle those Medusa sandworms don't turn us into statues along the way? We just have to have faith in the heart of the cards! Huh? What's going on? Now obviously, Yugi fails to run to the Eye of the Storm. Surprise, surprise. But when Yugi fails, a mystery man appears and tells Yugi to fuse with the armor and one of his favorite monsters. Now I wish somehow Yugi figured this out by himself instead of being told by this mystery character. I know this sounds weird, but I feel like someone telling you exactly what to do takes away from the game element of this challenge. It's like playing a game with someone behind you saying, do this, do that. It's just a backseat gamer. Now regardless, this is a really cool scene. Yugi activates his dual armor and fuses with the Dark Magician. Join with me to become one! Activate dual armor! He then heads into the eye of the storm and basically one shots the whisper in the wind which actually turns out to be the mystical sand. Which ironically is a fusion between ancient elf, which makes sense right? Ancient elf? And the giant soldier of stone. I'm sorry what? Can someone explain to me how the giant soldier of stone contributes towards this fusion in any way? And as soon as Yugi defeats her, one of the sections on Teya's pendant glows red, implying that they had completed the first trial, and they go straight into the second trial. Now one of the reasons I felt like this episode just wasn't for me, was the fact that it just felt pretty straightforward. Even though the task itself was pretty difficult in a sandstorm, they just received too much information to the point where I felt like I figured it out before they even went towards the desert. They also received extra information at the start that just seemed unfair. Now if they just added the part about the eye of the sandstorm into the scroll, it would probably make more sense. Also Dark Magician literally flew and showed Yugi the eye of the storm and also spoke by the way, which he didn't do the last episode. Behold the source of the storm. Also the mystery guy with the mask literally tells Yugi what to do to defeat the challenge, which the last person to attempt the challenge probably didn't receive. I felt like Yugi and his friends were just hard carried in this trial and I think that's probably what irks me the most about this episode. I just felt like they didn't deserve the win here and that the puzzle didn't really have any mystery or, or complexity to it. It was just pretty much go to the desert and defeat the bad guy. Or maybe I'm being too harsh. Let me know what you guys think. Guys, as usual, I will be breaking down episode 6 tomorrow, so stay tuned. And if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Until next time.